praise and love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, the sustainer, and the controller of the universe. And we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger, his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I know it's uh, quite cool today. Um, and it's interesting that officially winter has not begun yet. But nevertheless, this is where we choose to live. And so we have to accept the hard and the easy, the hot and the cold. Now, since last week, we started talking about friendship. And, yet, and uh, on Monday, we talked about the word friend from the Arabic language perspective. <clears throat> and what I would like to share with you today is to explore why is it we need friends? <clears throat> is it just seem like we can't do without friends? So why is it uh, people need friends? Well, the first answer is that Allah, the Creator, created us as sociable creatures. In other words, He created us with a nature to want to associate with other human beings. And of course, we associate with folks we feel some connection to or with. <clears throat> so this is our nature as human beings. The question is though, why did God create us like this? The answer is that a human being on his or her own cannot survive. We need others, we depend on others. Even if a person were to think, well, you know, I could go into some forest somewhere far away from civilization, <coughs> And I can live completely isolated from human beings. I don't need anybody. Well, perhaps the only way you can do that and truly exist on your own without having any sort of contact with any other person is if you make your own clothing. Because if you wear clothes, chances are you bought it from somewhere, from somewhere. And somebody else made that clothing. If you take any tools, Unless you make the tools from scratch yourself, somebody else made those tools. The thing is, it's highly unlikely that anybody can completely and entirely live on his or her own without being connected with someone else. So our own survival is dependent on our, the interaction and the connection we have with other human beings, whether we like it or not. And this is why, brothers and sisters, I know when, you, when, when our children, they hit the teenage years, uh, this is the time, of course, when they may give their parents the most headache in life. But this is the time that very often parents have issues with the friends of their children. And they, they sometimes demand that their children totally give up their friends. We need to understand that is unrealistic. It is not realistic to expect that a person will give up all his or her friends. Why? Because that's our nature, to have friends. So asking someone not to have friends is asking that person to become unnatural. It won't happen. At the same time, I also understand that parents, we may have certain concerns about the character of some friends, a certain individual. And that's why, on the one hand, it is not realistic that parents should demand that their children simply abandon all their friends and that's the solution. It's not. At the same time, our children and our young people need to understand what friendship is all about. And they need to understand the, the tremendous effect and impact that friends have on us. And inshallah, as we go through these various issues, we'll see the impact that they have. So, 
The solution is somewhere in the middle. It's not to give up all your friends, not just to take anybody as friends. It's somewhere in the middle. And the Prophet ﷺ has informed us of the great impact and influence that friends have on us. See, the problem is our young people, they don't, re they don't realize this impact. They don't realize how much of an influence that friends have on them. But they have, friends have a tremendous impact on the individual. The Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Mar'u ala deeni khalil. And let me translate this literally, because it's, it's, it's very interesting. The Prophet says that a person is on the religion of his friends. But religion here really means that a person will be judged by the behavior of his friends. A person is judged by the behavior of his friends. So that if a group is walking down the street and one person does something for which the police comes in, they will not just take that one person. Initially, they will probably arrest the whole group, take you down to the station. And then in the process of investigating, they'll figure out that most, most of the guys are okay. The thing is though, initially, the entire group comes under suspicion. Everybody is judged by the behavior of the one person. Everyone is judged by the behavior of that one person. And so this tells us of the great influence that our friends can have on us. Now sometimes this influence can be good. And so we ought to be what we call leaders. We should not be, we should not let our friends direct us as to what we should do and what direction we should go in. Unless it makes sense to do that, of course. But we should also try to exert some positive guidance and direction on the group. And so we need to be able to say to our friends, look, this is not right. We should not be doing it. And if they insist, we should have the courage to say, you know what, if you guys insist on doing this, I am gone, I'm out of here, I'm not sticking around. But sadly, especially for young people, of course, they feel this great need to, to belong to, to be part of the group. Because the group of friends, that is the, the, the norm, that is the going thing. Being alone is, the, is what is abnormal. It is seen as being abnormal. And that's why it's a losing battle to try to get a young person not to have any friends. Because they see being alone as being abnormal. And they want to be seen as normal, as fitting in. But there is influence. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ also said in the same hadith, after seeing that a person is judged by the behavior of his friends, he said, فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِمْ so let each one of you carefully select his friends. Carefully select your friends, because they will have some influence on you. And in any case, an outside person will simply look at your friends or at the group and may want to pass judgment on you. Now as Muslims, there's another reason why we need to have friends, why we need to associate, why we need to come out to programs. And this is why, as we have explored before, why even the prayers we perform, although the prayers are a, an individual responsibility, it is still done in the congregational setting. We have to come to the masjid in congregation to pray the same prayers. Unless, of course, the situation is such that we can't make it there. Why? Because coming here and standing next to, to the brothers repeatedly gives us a chance to connect, to become friends. It strengthens that bond between us. And there is a point to all of this. And this is highlighted in a hadith in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, I have never seen, and in this hadith, by the way, it's a long hadith, he's talking about the unfolding of the Day of Judgment and the a number of scenes that will unfold on that day. One of the things he mentioned though, is he said, I've never seen a group of people who are more willing 
to advocate on behalf of their friends, the new people. He said on the Day of Judgment, Allah the Exalted will send some people to paradise. And you would think these guys would be happy to go to paradise, they couldn't care less about anybody else? No. They will turn around and they will say, Oh Lord, some of our friends, they used to pray with us, they used to fast with us, but we don't see them with us today. And Allah the Creator, the Exalted, will say to them, all right, go into the hellfire and bring out everyone you know. Everyone you know. So if a person doesn't know you, chances are you're not going to be taken on. So it may very well be, brothers and sisters, the fact that you guys know me, that, that, that's why I might be removed from the hellfire. Take out everyone you know. And this is from the infinite mercy and grace of God Almighty that he would allow some people to intercede for others. But we have to know each other. And this knowledge here, of course, uh, uh, implies uh, you know, on an intimate level. Not someone you noticed around and that's it. Someone you have a relationship with, someone you've talked with, someone you know. And getting to know someone takes time. And it also involves sharing personal feelings so that you connect. So this is why it's important that we should have friends and have good friends. <coughs> friends who will encourage us, whose presence will inspire us to become even better people. Not the opposite. Because sadly, this happens a lot. Where friends, uh, the influence they exert on each other turns out to be negative. So that if not the whole group but individuals within the group end up, instead of being contributing members of society, they end up becoming liabilities of society. But what we need is to be contributing members of society. In other words, we should be assets of the society and for the society. And so our friends should encourage us to be inspired to do this. And we should inspire them to do the same. And this, of course, can only happen if we're truthful and sincere in our friendship in terms of encouraging one another to do what is good, but standing up and being courageous enough to, to speak up when something is wrong. So I hope and pray that Allah will open up our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message he has revealed for mankind. And we pray that he will inspire us all to live by this message. May he help us to find friends who will help us to come closer to him and to serve him and worship him better. And may he protect us from friends who may lead us astray and take us away from the right path. There are other issues relating to friendship that we have to go through, but uh, we can't do everything in the short time we have. So uh, in the next few sessions, inshallah, we will, we will deal with uh, the characteristics of good friends and, of course, the characteristics of bad friends. But may Allah bless all of us and keep us firm on the straight path. Uh,